Good evening and welcome to Quotes Today by Live Law. This is your host Urvashi Chahan bringing you the latest updates on the legal front. This is your go-to source for all things legal. Let us start. Starting with an update from the Supreme Court on the Adani Hindenburg issue. The Supreme Court has today reserved its judgment in a batch of PILs seeking court-monitored investigation into the allegations made by US-based short-selling firm Hindenburg Research against the Adani Group regarding violations of stock market regulations. A bench comprising CJI Chandrachur, Justice J.B. Pardewala and Justice Manoj Mishra heard the matter for nearly two hours today. During the hearing, the CJI orally said that SEBI must take steps to protect the stock market from volatility caused by instances like short selling. The court expressed disapproval of the allegations made by petitioners against impartiality of members of the expert committee, which was constituted by the court in March this year to examine if there was any regulatory framework in the matter. The allegations made against the investigation of SEBI also did not seem to impress the CGI. When advocate Prashant Bhushan, appearing for petitioner, referred to the factual revelations in the Hindenburg report, the CGI categorically said that the court could not proceed on the assumption that the report was true, as it was a matter for investigation. The court also refused to direct any inquiry against State Bank of India and the Life Insurance Corporation for investment into Adani Group as per the petition filed by Congress leader Jaya Thakur. In the next update, the Supreme Court today heard the petition filed by State of Kerala against the governor withholding assent on the bills passed by the legislature. When the matter was taken up, senior advocate and former Attorney General K.K. Venugopal appearing for the state told the bench that several bills sent for governor's assent have been pending for the last two years. The Supreme Court asked Kerala Governor Arif Mohammad Khan to refer to the recent judgment passed in the case related to Punjab governor's inaction on bills. As you already know, Supreme Court in a similar petition filed by the state of Punjab had held that if a governor decides to withhold assent to a bill, then he has to return the bill to the legislature for reconsideration. The court had also orally stated that the trend of governors acting on the bills only after the state government approaches the Supreme Court must stop. Accordingly, the court adjourned the hearing till next Tuesday, that is 28th November. The Supreme Court has granted anticipatory bail to law students who were accused of injuring two advocates inside their chamber. Earlier, the students had filed a plea seeking anticipatory bail before Telangana High Court. However, the court dismissed the petition after taking note of the fact that they had trespassed into the advocate's office and assaulted both the advocates. The High Court had also recorded that in the complaint filed by the advocate, accused persons had allegedly assaulted a woman advocate as well. The accused persons then approached the Supreme Court in an appeal. The top court was of the opinion that there was no material for keeping the appellants in custody at this stage. Apart from this, the court also observed that the appellants' detention is not justifiable in the absence of any other serious reasons. So the court allowed the appeal. However, it imposed a few conditions. It directed the appellants to be present at the office of investigating officer once a week, every Saturday at 5 p.m till the filing of charge sheet. Besides this, they are also not to interfere with or influence the witnesses while remaining enlarged on bail. The Calcutta High Court today dismissed an appeal preferred by the West Bengal government against the order of a single bench which permitted a BJP rally near Victoria House in Kolkata on 29th of November. Earlier this month, a single bench of the High Court had allowed the rally and had reprimanded Kolkata police for computerized rejection of rally permission. Today, a division bench of Chief Justice T.S. Sivangnanam and Justice Hiranname Bhattacharya upheld the single bench decision and said that the advisory says applications need to be made two or three weeks prior to the program. And in this case, the application has been made 23 days prior. 
the court said that the advisory is not a statute and cannot be taken as a rigid rule and there is discretion vested with the authorities. It further said that processions, meetings and rallies are regular features of the state. In many instances, rallies have been held without any permission. Many times rallies paralyze the city's traffic and the police are unable to control the same. Accordingly, the court dismissed the appeal and asked the appellants to adhere to the terms and conditions laid down in the Kolkata police website. While the state attempted to suggest alternative areas and argue on the legal aspects of the matter, the bench firmly observed that if such arguments continued, then affidavits would have to be called for and while the state may be heard in full, it may lead to complete ban of rallies in the state. The Punjab and Haryana High Court has directed the Haryana DGP to constitute a special investigating team to probe the alleged sexual assault and custodial torture inflicted by Haryana Railway General Police on a student. The bench of Justice Harpreet Singh Barar was hearing plea of a student who was aspiring for a government job seeking independent investigation of alleged custodial torture. The student was allegedly stopped by the ticket inspector on the basis of suspicion at Batinda railway station. Thereafter, an FIR was lodged for forgery at Hisar. It was alleged that the student was stripped and abused by the general railway police and also subjected to third degree torture. The petitioner submitted that in spite of informing the doctor during medical examination otherwise, he was declared fit without being examined at the instance of police personnel. Even the jail doctor kept giving him medicines for treatment of piles without conducting any physical examination. Justice Barar observed that in its inherent power under Section 482 of CRPC, the court can entrust the investigation to an independent agency in order to rule out any bias and secure the ends of justice. Accordingly, the court ordered the SIT to investigate the matter and file its report within three months from the date of its constitution. The matter is listed for 22nd March 2024 for further consideration. Stay tuned with us. The Kerala High Court has upheld the decision of Kerala Public Service Commission declining a disabled candidate's request to bring his own scribe to examination. The appellant, a visually challenged person having 100% disability, has preferred a writ appeal before the Kerala High Court seeking a direction that persons with disabilities can bring their own scribe for competitive examinations as per the Persons with Disabilities Act and circulars issued by the Government of India. The appellant alleged that he faced some difficulties while writing the Kerala administration examination with the scribe provided to him and was not satisfied with the assistance provided by the scribe. The appeal was preferred against the decision of the single judge which stated that scribes can be allotted to disabled candidates from the panel prepared by the commission. The candidates of a 40 percent disability can be given an opportunity to interact with the scribe allotted at least two days before the exam. And if a candidate finds the scribe unsuitable, the commission can provide another scribe from the panel. The counsel for the appellant submitted that a scribe provided by the commission would be unable to communicate with the candidate freely. On the other hand, the government pleader argued that if candidates brought scribes of their own choice, then it might lead to malpractice. Analyzing the objectives of the Act and the circulars issued by the Commission, the division bench comprising Justice Anu Sivaraman and Justice C. Pratap Kumar observed that the decision was meant to rule out any possible misuse of the scribe during exam and thus upheld it. The Supreme Court today adjourned the hearing of former Delhi Government Cabinet Minister Satendra Jain's bail plea until 4th December. As you know that Jain was arrested by the Enforcement Directorate in May last year and was granted interim bail due to medical reasons this year. A bench comprising Justices A.S. Bapanna and Bela M. Trivedi is currently hearing his special leave petition challenging a decision of the Delhi High Court to deny him bail in April. 
In August this year, the court had extended Jain's interim bail for the second time after senior advocate Abhishek Manu Singhvi, representing him, stated that he was undergoing rehabilitation following a complex spinal operation. This was despite opposition from additional Solicitor General S. V. Raju, who advocated for an independent examination by AIMS and a cancellation of the interim bail. Today, the matter was adjourned. However, the court agreed to extend the interim bail granted earlier until the next date of hearing. And lastly, a Kerala court has permitted the Enforcement Directorate to furnish digital copies of documents having 26,000 pages to be furnished to 55 accused persons instead of hard copies. The decision has been instrumental in enabling the ED to save around 17 lakh rupees of central exchequer, which was the expected expenditure it would have incurred in supplying hard copies of the documents. This was in a case filed by ED against 55 persons accused of various offences under the PMLA and IPC. ED had averred that it would be impossible to furnish 55 hard copies of documents having 26,000 pages that furnishing hard copies to each of the accused would require 13 lakh sheets of paper, which in turn would mean the felling of hundreds of trees. It thus prayed for permitting the supply of copies in electronic format, which the court allowed. I hope you found this video informative and enjoyable. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss any of our future content. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.